parts one and two of this series, we've seen how to make vocal and guitar recordings using Universal Audio's Apollo audio interfaces. We've seen the power of Unison technology to provide emulated microphone preamps and guitar amplifiers to help shape and control the sound of recordings at the tracking stage. Now it's time to move on to the mix stage, where we'll be relying on UAD's vast array of powered plugins to provide control over EQ, dynamics, reverberation, delays, and many other types of effect. In this film, we're going to be focusing on EQ and compression, starting with our vocal part. We've got a great sounding vocal which was recorded through the Manly Vox Box, but because we elected not to record any additional insert effect at the recording stage, our vocal part is a fresh canvas. Let's start by soloing this first vocal take and bringing the sound of one of the most classic recording consoles of all time to the mix stage, the SSL E channel strip. This gives us a chance to configure both tone and dynamics with separate EQ and compression stages. We're gonna start with EQ, adding some extra air to the sweetness of this vocal, selecting around 10 kilohertz and boosting by about three decibels. We're going to follow suit at around five kilohertz adding perhaps a little less here before rolling a little bit out around one kilohertz. We're also going to select 450 hertz in this lowest band and roll a little more out here. In the filter section at the top, we've got a chance to add a high pass filter, which is useful if you ever need to remove bass rumble, which may have been captured at the time of recording. That should give us a nice sort of start for our vocal sound, but we also have a chance to include compression at this stage. By pressing the compressor in button here, we can select the threshold point, which is the value above which compression will be applied, before selecting a ratio amount, which is how hard the compressor is going to work above the threshold value. We also have a chance to control release, producing a nice natural sounding response as compression ends at the end of each phrase. Within the E channel strip, we have a chance to decide whether or not EQ or compression will, become first, will come first. And if I select the pre-dynamics button, that gives us a chance to use EQ before compression. Let's hear how that vocal sounds now, firstly by itself. You always take the best of me. You always leave the rest of me. And let's compare that to the original recorded sound. You always take the best of me. You always leave the rest of me. Straight away, the vocal's coming through much more than it was before. So let's copy that setting to the other vocal parts and we'll bring those back into the mix as well. That's sounding much better. And what we have in the output stage over here is a chance to attenuate volume if we want to as well. So this is a volume control for the processed signal. We can go one stage further with dynamics control by bringing another compressor to um, bear on this vocal part. And we're going to turn now to the 1176. This gives us a chance just to add a second stage of dynamics if we want the vocal to pop even more. You always take the best of me You always leave the rest of me We have a chance to push the vocal very hard with these ratio controls here or to select something a little more natural as we are with a ratio of 4 to 1. The input and output controls allow us to configure the amount of signal going into this compressor and how much is coming out as well. Let's try some of those settings now. You always take the best of me You always leave the rest of me That's a much more extreme compression. Let's back that off a little bit. You always take the best of me You always leave the rest of me 
That's working really nicely. Let's again add the 1176 to the other two vocal takes. You always take the best of me You always leave the rest of me And now we've got a much punchier vocal sound. Now let's turn to the guitar part. At the recording stage, we tracked through Unison technology and the Fender amp. But now that the mix is taking a little more shape, let's turn to EQ. For the guitar part, we're gonna to turn to the Pultec MEQ5. This gives us three bands of EQ control with peaks at the bottom and the top and a dip for the mid range. Again, let's solo the guitar part and just begin to see how we can bring a little more life to it. Again, I'm gonna add a little air, dialing in a fairly generous amount at the top end and we're gonna set that around four kilohertz. We may need to scoop out a little bit of the middle, so let's try a dip there at around 700, but also add a little bit of body around 300 hertz to start with in this lowest band. Again, let's just have a listen to that first of all, both in and out of the mix. Here it is with no EQ. So let's turn the plugin on. and off. You can hear that we can really clean the part up and add extra bite here at around 300 hertz in this lowest band. Again, let's copy this part to the other guitar and hear them in the context of the mix. So even though those changes are relatively subtle, we've now got extra bite in the guitar parts. Now let's move on to the drums within our project. The drums in the project are programmed from a variety of sampled sources, but there's a huge advantage to treating them from a compression point of view as one. The way in which different workstations do this varies, but what I'm going to do here is to assign all of these sounds to an individual auxiliary bus, which I'm just going to label as drums. What I then have a chance to do is to bring the Fairchild 660 compressor onto this channel, where I can set up a compression treatment which will affect all of the sources within the mix. Let's just have a listen to what the Fairchild 660 can do. So through these parameters, you can see that I have a chance to create anything from a really squashed, heavily processed signal to something much more subtle. 
Let's experiment with those settings again now in the context of the track. There's one control here which can really help as well. If you prefer a more squeezed sound so that the compressor is working very hard, but actually the overall sound of that is too much for the track, you can blend in a balance between the dry original signal and the processed wet signal with this mix dial. Let's see what we can do with that next. Let's focus on the Fairchild 660 and find out exactly what it's doing on the drums. It's always a good idea to do an A-B test to hear the before and after processing. Um, so let's just do that now. Here are the original drums without any compression. And here are the drums with compression. When you're comparing compressors, it's a good idea to make sure that levels are matched. At the moment, we've got an output boost here, so of course the drums are louder. But if we take that down uh, so that there's no boost, you can still hear the difference between what the compressor is doing uh, compared to the dry drums without compression. Let's just compare those as well. And with the compression. So you can hear the drums are much fuller and rounder. And of course, we're using the output gain boost here, the makeup gain boost, just to make sure that the drums are the right level for the track. That's working well and is giving us an immediate parallel compression treatment. In this episode, we've started working with UAD powered plugins at the mix stage, working with EQ and compression to shape tone and dynamics within our mix. We've done this primarily on the parts that we recorded at Real World Studios, the vocals and guitars, but we've also started looking at effects on drums too. In the next film, we're going to move on to start looking at spatial treatments, specifically reverb and delay.